Hi, my name is Chris and I'm making this nature video for the Stuart Low Trust. Today I'm in Yorkshire and I'm taking a walk along the banks of the River Wall. So this is the River Wharf, it starts high up in the Yorkshire Dales at Greenfield Beck and flows down through some of the best countryside in Britain across the Yorkshire Dales and finishes at the River Ouse. This is Paul in Wharfdale. And it's the boundary between, on that side, is West Yorkshire. And on this side, is North Yorkshire. And this time of year, when it's been dry, the levels are quite low. And you can see there's this sort of gravel spit island in the middle that has colonised all these grasses and wildflowers. And the banks are waist high and higher in thistles, grasses, wildflowers. But in winter, with all the rainfall of higher up, that gathers down into the valleys, this becomes a torrent. And so where I'm stood now would be underwater. The fields here often flood. But this time I'm quite safe. And here we have Meadow Cranesville is coming to the end of its flowering season and it has these sort of violet blue flowers and it's very popular if I scare it off with hoverflies And here on the hogweed, looking like a bee, it's actually a drone fly. So like many of the pollinating insects, which are actually defenceless, it makes sense to mimic something that has got a defence. So many of them are striped or have evolved to look like bees or wasps. And so this is a drone fly. So its larvae live on rotting vegetation in water or in pom ponds or puddles or bits at the bottom of banks where it stays wet. And then the adult feeds on nectar and pollen but because they're out in the open, it really pays to look like you've got a sting. And so they've evolved to look like bees. I mean, some of them much more so than this. I mean, some are just identical to bees and it's really hard to tell them apart. But if you're a passing bird, you probably would think twice about snatching this one. So 
also it really shows how the flat heads of umbels like this hogweed with its open upward facing flowers are so important for pollinators because it can just work its way a lot across the top of the flower head sucking up nectar and pollen not alone either. I don't know if you can see. But the flower head covered in tiny little flies that are not only feeding but they're courting. You can see they have wings with little dots on. As I'm walking through the path. It's all this, this is a creeping thistle, which a lot of gardeners will hate because it runs underground with big tough roots and rhizomes that will go down a couple of metres. And each year it can just spread, oh, yards and yards, well, metres and metres. But because it produces lots and lots of the shaving brush flowers, really soft pinky violet, that are a really good source of nectar and pollen, as are all the thistles, and it produces fluffy seed heads, which birds will feed, it's got real benefit to wildlife. When you're looking carefully on these thistle plants, you'll see there's little bits of brown leaf. But, if I can find it, there it is. Look at that bit of brown leaf. And then that bit of brown leaf, we've got legs. So we can see it's not a leaf, but it's a moth. And look at that camouflage. 
If I wasn't looking really carefully, there's no way I'd have seen that. So for birds, quickly working through, if he keeps still, he's very unlikely to get eaten. And so we'll live another night to be able to go off, mate, lay eggs. Isn't that marvellous? May not be able to see. Well done. This is a plant hopper, a frog hopper. So if ever you've seen cuckoo spit, which is like the frothy stuff that their larvae excrete, it looks like someone spat on the stems of plants. I'll see if I can find some. But this, below the flower head, is the adult that it turns into. And they're funny little insects. Oh, I've lost it. There it is. And they're sap suckers. And so they use their stiletto like mouth parts to tap into the sap of the plant. And that's how the larvae does the same thing. And that's how the excess liquid it sort of whips it up to make a protective coat. The birds don't eat it so and keeps it moist. So it's hidden in a bubble of spit. Well, it sort of whips it up by beating it with his legs. So it's a bit like meringue more than anything. But this is the adult, which is really quite hard to see. And I'm going to see if I can get it to do it. Oh, there you go, it's turned around. And if you get them, they come along and they've got protection, so they jump. If they feel threatened, oh, or they move around the other side, if they feel really threatened, He's obviously not, I'm not, not that threatening. Oh, I've lost him, where is he? He should. Bing! And he jumps. And they fire themselves to protection, high speed, like a big catapult. Isn't that great? amazing the difference between their underwing so when they're closed they look like a dried up old leaf and their upper wing with that lovely pattern which warns off predators like birds and things that they don't taste very nice but also it's so they can see each other well because butterflies see really well in colour and so when they're performing for a mate they're all flashy but when they don't want to get eaten they look like a brown old leaf Makes sense, really. So all along the banks, there's this great stands of this cheerful pink flare. And this is hairy willow herb. That also has the country name of codlins and cream. And you can see, it provides thousands and thousands and thousands 
all these lovely pink flowers. So this is a native, really popular with bees. But amongst it, and even more popular with bees, is this. Which is nearly identical in colour. And really popular with bumblebees. Now this isn't native. This is Himalayan balsam. You may have seen it on the news or you may have seen it in newspapers because it's originally a garden plant it was introduced by Victorians but it's spread across Britain's waterways and it's an annual, only lives for one year and then spreads by seed and it has explosive seed capsules I think it might be a bit early, I don't know if there are any but you can see closer to the water the seeds float so it's spread by water you can see all the way along it's nodding flowers and they're pretty flowers I mean you can see why people originally introduced it as a garden plant very easy from seed but it's really competitive you can see how its leaves got like big leaves and it grows really densely so it can just crowd out all the native flowers and it's really quite a damaging invasive exotic and if you break the stems it smells disgusting as well a really musky nauseating smell but it is ever so pretty And here, looking like a stand of exotic orchids, with these lovely pinky spikes, is marsh woundwort. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a great big patch of it here. Which the bees must be loving. And here you can see just what profusion the Himalayan balsam grows in. There's just nothing else you know, to make it. So apart from the early spring flowers that have done their stuff before the Himalayan balsam arises, as you go down you can see, because of its big leaves blocking out all the light, underneath there's very little diversity. And that is the problem with Himalayan balsam. Up here, yes. It's so pretty. Stinks though. Yep. And here we have this great big leafy plant, which is burdock. And you'll know there's some city bits of city waste ground and weedy parks and allotments but it's in full flower at the moment and it has these lovely sort of thistle flowers all covered in their hooky spines well anetra and pollen lots of bees and hoverflies are working it but what's always so interesting about burdock is the burrs, because it spreads its seed by um, the burrs hooking onto the fur of things. And if you get in really close, you can see that all the tips of what would have been hairs 
have now got hooks on and so they will just hook on to fur, feathers, clothes, anything to spread their seed in autumn. Amazing! Very popular with wildlife, even little tiny flies. Great plants, common and grand. If you manage them well, they're not bad in gardens, the structure, but they do seed about. I mean, they are weeds, but I love them. Bumblebee, they love them too. And here it illustrates quite nicely the difference between winter and summer. So in summer the river is this lovely shallow, slow flowing, gentle river. But as you turn around you see all of this, all of these sticks and trash all gathered here it's all collected in the branches right above head height you've even got there a big heavy fence post and I would say I'm stood a couple of feet above the water level now and some of these branches and sticks caught in the branches up in the tree are probably four or five feet above me and that would be the water level in winter. So it comes right up these banks, right up and right up into the branches of the trees. So you realise just how deep it would be in winter when it's in full flow. But this time of year, it is just lovely.